I've seen many times with, with in tutoring, I teach all grades, all subjects, or I teach all grades in this subject. And there's a misconception that if you cast the widest net possible, you'll have the greatest return of, of students coming to work with you. That's what I think sparked me into wanting to become an educator, was this really wonderful teacher who really showed a lot of care for his, his students. And where a coach comes in is somebody who can provide that roadmap to, to developing your business, helping you set those goals, being a sounding board for you. And find ways to really get your pulse on your business so that you can make that appreciable difference as teachers, make that appreciable difference, and at the same time, grow your business. I think as well, if you're working, working as a team, it's very important that you have consistency. But really, it's about a message to the parent how you're going to help their MVP, their child, or their children. That's where you, you should be focused on in your marketing. Welcome to the Qualified Tutor Podcast. I'm your host, Ludo Miller, and I'll be interviewing tutors and thought leaders from across the tutoring landscape to inspire, inform, and motivate you to become the best tutor you can be. The Qualified Tutor Community is a safe and supportive space for tutors who love to learn and grow. We offer training, resources, ideas, and a chance to connect with like-minded tutors. If you'd like to continue the conversation, join our Qualified Tutor Community at www.qualifiedtutorcommunity.org or find it in the show notes. Welcome to Michael Gibbon, uh, a coach and tutor who's based in Toronto. Uh, Michael has spent uh, many years in the tutoring industry, uh, founding and growing his, his tutoring business, uh, I Am Success Tutoring, before transitioning to coaching and, and has spent the last uh, year and a half delivering high quality one-on-one -on -one coaching to private tutors and tutor company owners to help grow and, and, and support their businesses. Uh, in addition to, to practical experience, uh, Michael is also a, a certified teacher and also has his master's practitioner designation from the International Association of Coaching. Michael knows what tutors find difficult in setting up and maintaining their business. Uh, but today, Today, we're going to discuss the, the importance of coaching and assisting tutors, uh, expert tips that Michael has for each and, and every tutor out there, and the biggest mistakes that tutors and, and tutoring business owners can avoid in their development. Um, so we're really, really excited about, about what's to come today. Uh, welcome, Michael. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you very much, Luda, for having me today and uh, for an opportunity to speak with your audience. Yeah, we, we, we can't wait. It's... Um, a wonderful angle to bring to this podcast is is coaching and and the kind of professional development that, that tutors, uh, as with so many others in, in different industries, deserve uh, and need. And it's something that's really taking off in in the UK and of course in in Canada and the US, where where you're based. But we'd love to know. We'd love to start, Michael, with with a with a great question that that really tells us more about our guests. And that question is, what kind of a student were you, Michael? Uh, so as a student, I was uh, definitely an overachiever perfectionist. Um, socially, I had uh, some difficulty fitting in uh, with my peers. Uh, so I was bullied a fair bit. Uh, by my 10th grade year, I almost dropped out of school. My grades plummeted into the cellar. And I was like, I I'm, I'm done with school. I don't really need this. And that year, I met a really amazing teacher who came into my life. And he galvanized me and motivated me and really showed me to just continue to persevere, continue to go for what you want. And it was very powerful and very motivating for me. And that's what I think sparked me into wanting to become an educator was this really wonderful teacher who really showed a lot of care for his, his students. And uh, yeah, and that really, that was my journey was being this overachieving perfectionist who really had difficulty fitting in, trying to find my own niche in the world and uh, yeah, becoming galvanized by a great teacher and going forward from there. 
that's uh, such a heartwarming story, not only to hear for, for fellow students who, who are in your position, but also for educators who know that the impact that they have on, on their students can be enormous and, and, and kind of lifelong. So do you think that's the, the kind of how you were as a student has, has led into your, your professional career, that kind of that perfectionism? I would say it's it's uh, it's it's waned a little bit as I've gotten older. I think uh, I realized it's okay to make you know it's okay to make mistakes. We all you know, we're all human, but um, definitely I think really trying to provide that that exceptional quality as much as you can is really that's still ingrained in me, and that hard work ethic is still there. Perfect, brilliant. Well, I imagine you you really th- that comes across in your own tutoring, doesn't it? That 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 kind of natural outlook that you've had since you were since you were young. Um, is something that can be transferred across to to students quite easily. Um, that's definitely something I noticed about my own tutoring is probably how I was as a student comes across in my in my teaching. Um, so that's that's a really positive a really positive sign. So I, I wanted to to kind of to really kick off the, the conversation that we're going to have today with a little look at how the tutoring industry may have developed since you first joined the industry since you started your career in tutoring so uh, I'd I'd love to know kind of what what do you see have been the biggest changes in the tutoring industry since the inception of of IAM Success Tutoring to to today really? I think there'd be two things Um, I think first we've really there's been an evolution in the um, in tutoring style it's it's more holistic uh, whereas before I feel that the confidence building and the motivation that invisible piece of the curriculum was there, but it wasn't um, advertised as much to families. It's, this is a wonderful opportunity to build your child's confidence. And the mentorship piece is, de- is far more developed now versus 10 years ago, and which is a really nice thing to see. Um, also, technology has it's, it's radically changed over the last 10 years. I mean, especially now in the midst of this pandemic, we're definitely... You know, not just relying on technology, but we're really expanding our understanding of technology and there's an openness to it. And it's, it's created a whole different way to teach. And it's, it's been, again, that's been a huge change from 10 years ago where uh, pencil paper was still, was still a method of a really strong method for tutoring. Yeah. Now, now we just have kind of virtual whiteboards with you know, virtual pens and virtual rubbers. It all seems rather strange, doesn't it? So so when you first started with I Am Success, was was there any kind of online tutoring? Uh, there was, there was, but it wasn't, um, it wasn't something that was as, I think, widely available as it is now. And I think the audience has changed as well for online tutoring. I noticed a lot of online tutoring then was for ESL and for if you're teaching in, uh, students overseas versus now, you can teach somebody within your neighborhood online. Yeah, and it's it's, yeah. it's more it's more accessible, and it's something that's become more mainstream. Yeah, or, or or you can teach you know three or four different students at the same time within your neighborhood, can't you? Because all they have to do is is kind of log on, log on to your session. Um, no, it, it certainly revolution revolutionized uh, the way that we work, and and it's going to be very interesting to see out of the you know the the back end of this of the pandemic, or kind of as we move towards the easing of restrictions how online tutoring remains you know will it still be a large part will people move back to uh, face-to-face sessions i can see there being a kind of a hybrid um i i'm sure that's the same kind of where you are michael yeah abs- oh, absolutely i think that uh, if you hit it on the head we're definitely going to go into a more of a hybrid model because i think online tutoring has become it's 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 less people who were more maybe tech averse have really developed a taste for it and an understanding of it. And, and then those who have not can, can slip back into that face-to-face model. So, yeah, I think it's definitely going to be more of a, a hybrid versus predominantly in person. Yeah. Now, w- one of the main things that uh, that tutors have struggled with uh, in the past year is, is exactly that, is moving from face-to-face to online. So, you know, that's something certainly something we've seen many many questions about that just within our own uh, tutoring community our online community you know many questions about how are we meant to take our, our face-to-face practice our in-person practice online you know is it really that simple just to transfer over but what that feeds into is is essentially tutors coming together and providing support to each other so off the back of that I'd, I'd love to know a bit more about what you do and, and, and why you, you moved into coaching. Why, 
why do tutors need a coach if 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 we're if we know our subject and we've been tutoring for many years why is it that tutors would need coaching that's a great question uh definitely for tutors um yeah the academic piece and developing the subject and the educational skill is, is, is obviously a wonderful and vital piece of the puzzle but i also find from my own personal experience with i am success tutoring and also when working with other clients that that business side is very green. And a lot of those key elements are missing in not just surviving a tutoring business, but thriving your tutoring business. And having those key elements in place in, biz in business, it could be foundational items like, how are you marketing? What is your sales looking like? How are you building your relationships with your client, with your families? Um, how are you networking your business, et cetera, et cetera. There's different elements there how you're doing those things can impact and expedite the growth of your business. So that's an, a very, a very important piece. And where a coach comes in is somebody who can provide that roadmap to, to developing your business, helping you set those goals, being a sounding board for you. Because as we all know, with small businesses, like there's definitely this ebbs and flows there and helping to really be a sounding board to develop that business and have more flows and ebbs. So that's, yeah, that's part of why a coach, I think, is very vital in the tutoring industry. Okay, so, so there's, it's kind of directing those individuals who may not know about the business side of things towards resources and, and, and uh, checklists and PDFs that can help uh, the tutors understand really what business means. Yeah, it's bad and plus providing a clarity and providing um, an understanding and, um, and, and helping tutors to have an understanding of where they want to take their business, where they want it to go, and acting as a catalyst with, with tutors to get to where they want to go in their business. Yeah, in addition yeah. to the resources and those pieces, which of course are, are helpful as well. Yeah. So I, I'd love to know, um, how is it that, that, that you step in, Michael? Where, where, at what point on a, on a tutor's roadmap do you tend to, to step in and, and assist a tutor or, or a tutoring business owner? Sure. So um, usually it's um, a couple of situations. Uh, the, the tutor could be, it could be somebody who's been a private tutor for a while, uh, who's ready to expand it and make it into, a, into, their, into a business. They're ready to turn it into a tutoring business, but they're not sure about those launch fundamentals of how to launch a tutoring business and take it off the ground. Uh, some of my clients have been in business for a few years now, but they're having difficulty with finding clients or how, how to get referrals and networking, those elements in place. And for others, it's, you know, they've been in business for a fair bit of time, but they're having, they're concerned about the summer right now. And so I've had a, somebody recently ask, well, what do we do for summer? How do I, how do I navigate my summer? And so that's something that I'm helping different tutors with developing a strategy for getting, getting clients in the summertime and uh, reducing that stress about what are we going to do during the July, June, July, August, in September months. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to ask something which is maybe a bit cheeky, Michael, but without letting us into, you know, without, without having to, uh, you know, pay you for a session, Michael, what are, what are a couple of things that a tutor can be doing now to prepare for work during the summer? Um, I'm not asking for a whole pitch. I'm not asking for a whole <laughs> session, but just a little insight into a couple of things that tutors can be doing now to, to prepare for that typically leaner. Time. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. So, a couple of things that uh, tutors can do that are really that can provide uh, additional client growth in the summer is uh, parent-child learning packages can be really. Um, I found were very can be very quite successful. Where you parents may not want to have tutoring during the summer necessarily, child might not be available, whatever the reason may be. You provide the parents with here's some goals in June. Here's some materials for June, July, August. Let's circle back mid-July and let's circle back and see how your child's progressing. And then let's do an assessment at the end of August. So we know when your child get, gets ready for school in September, they're confident. They know where they are. We know where they are. And we can go into fall strong. And that's a package that parents will often, yeah, they will purchase. And then they can work with their child on that through the summer. Um, other options are the back to school boosters. So having something in late August where you have a booster, group booster program to help you know, your students get ready for September. And it's a nice boost starting in August. So you're not, so it gives parents that a chance to be proactive and know where their child is before they go into the door in September. So those are a couple of possible methods that can work to help with um, 
maintaining clients over the summer, gaining new clients, and also helping your business to continue to grow in clients and sales over the summer months. Yeah. So would you, you'd recommend a tutor to continue with actual tutoring sessions over the summer? Would you, even if parents are maybe a little bit more, a little more hesitant to have sessions over the summer because exams might be over or they might be on holiday, you'd still recommend tutors to, to keep up the momentum of those sessions, would you? Um, if, if parents if parents and guardians are open to it and they would like to continue it, of course, you know, that's, that would be wonderful. Um, but if parents and guardians are more like, oh, I'd like to take a few weeks off or several weeks off and let's reconnect uh, towards the end of the summer, you can always offer those alternative uh, styles of learning to keep the learning going over the summer. So that you can do the parent-child learning package, you can do a summer booster course, uh, back to school booster, like there are things available as well as alternate uh, streams in addition to just the one-on-one tutoring each week. Yeah, I, I really love that idea of, of um, handing over agency to the parents to work with their child over the summer. Um, you know, that summer can be such a good time for young children to, to hang out as a, you know, as, as a family, to be with their parents, to be with cousins or uncles or aunts or whatever it is. And, and, if, and if the parents feel like they're in control, then that's, that's amazing. Absolutely. And it's, and with, with the learning, it can be as, as little as 15 minutes a day. I mean, I do it, do it whenever you'd like during the day, do it maybe at the start, wherever, whenever you want to do it. And then that part's done for the day. You still have your summertime with your child, but at the same time, the learning is still an ongoing process to keep, keep that mind out. Okay. Well, that's good to know for all of us. Uh, not just for students over the summer holiday, but 15 minutes of learning a day uh, can be beneficial. Um, okay, great. So, uh, that's a really good look ahead to the summer. You know, we're in April now. There's, there's coming towards what would uh, normally be the, ex- the kind of very busy exam period. Uh, obviously, in, in the UK, exams, uh, the primary exams at, at 16 and 18 have, have been cancelled. So perhaps we'll be moving to a kind of summer mode for tutoring a little bit earlier than, than perhaps in, in previous years. So that's really important to, to implement kind of good and effective strategies from, from as early as possible. Um, but I want to just 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 go back a little bit to, let's say the two main uh, nodes of of a tutoring uh, of, of a tutor's business, which is or, or of a tutor's work, which is the business side and the teaching side. So, Michael, tell us a little bit more about why what is the importance of the business side compared to the actual teaching side of a, of a tutor? What, why is that important? Uh, yeah. So the business so the business side there is an importance there because, like I said a little earlier. Do you want your business to survive or do you want it to thrive? And the business side is, and I know when I started my business, like I was so green and so overwhelmed by what was going on in the business side. And I I felt like I fell quickly behind that first few months because I just didn't know where to go or, or who to turn to. And it's important to have that plan in place, have those specific goals, have your plan of what you're looking to do in your business. And Think about who you want to help and how you want to help them and just develop that business plan of where you want to take your business every month, month over month over month. So you know where you want to go. And then the teaching side becomes less, less stressful as well, because you're not thinking about the business side while you're doing the teaching part. So you want to take the time to really develop that business side, set the goals, be proactive and prepare ahead of time. And yeah, and keep your eye on the prize of where you want to take your business. Okay, Brill. So it's it's about freeing up that really uh, effective time. You know, the reason that we are tutoring, which is to improve the learning outcomes for students. It's about maximizing that that time. Absolutely, and being efficient in, in, in running your business and and trying to and find ways to really get your pulse on your business so that you can make that appreciable difference as teachers, make that appreciable difference, and at the same time grow your business. So I, I think it would be really beneficial to hear what, what are some of the main obstacles on a tutor's efficiency? What is it that, that, that sometimes that you've seen in your experience, Michael? What is it that, that, that drags down tutors in that kind of business side efficiency? Sure thing. Uh, so there's been, I've noticed there's been a few things. So uh, the first one is not knowing who, who your ideal client is. Not know, I mean, if you, I've seen many times with, with in tutoring, I teach all grades, all subjects, or I teach all grades in this subject. And 
there's a misconception that if you cast the widest net possible, you'll have the greatest return of, of students coming to work with you. When, however, if you find who your ideal client is, what is the grade you want to work with? What's the subject you want to work with? Um, what type of like, what, what problem do you want to solve? What couple of problems do you want to solve for this, for this parent and guardian when working with their child? That will really hyper-focus where you want to go and reduce your stress because if you narrow your niche, it might start a little bit slower, but then the word gets out that you're the expert in that field. And then you grow and grow and grow in that, in that specific discipline. Uh, take an example, if a parent goes to a website for company A and says all grades, all subjects, and they see company B where it's uh, grade one to three English, and they're looking for a tutor for their child in grade two for English, they're going to probably go to company B there, or at least they're going to be sparked to look at company B's website and learn more over company A where it's we do everything. What does that mean? So that's something to think about. Um, for marketing, that's another piece um, that can become a roadblock is there's a temptation to put all about your experience and how much you cost. And if you put how much you cost, and it's something I learned as well when I was starting my business too, uh, with I Am Success Tutoring, if you're putting how much you cost, you're making it more financial transaction instead of a point of connection. When they're at your ad, when they're looking at what you're gonna do for their child. So, you want, so your marketing should be very much about who you help, how you can help. And, and giving hope to a parent so that they want to find out more about you. And then after that, you can share more of your credentials. But really, it's about a message to the parent, how you're going to help their MVP, their child, or their children. That's where you, you should be focused on in your marketing. And same with your website, who you help, how you help. Put that front and center. Not, not all about, every, all that other stuff can be secondary. Um, and then I think sales as well, you know, sales is a very, can be a very tricky process and it's really having that confidence to be able to have an interaction with a parent or guardian where it becomes a, a very easygoing discussion where a parent will want to work with you. And that's something that could be a very, that's a, that's a major roadblock. So having a sales guideline in mind and ready to go for, or written down of what you're going to, what you're going to say to parents. And I found something that worked very well with clients uh, or tutoring clients, when you speak to them, thank them for taking the time to reach out to you and how can I help? And just start with that and give the parent or guardian as much chance to share with you. So don't start off telling about your services and your experience and you know how wonderful your service is. Let the parents discover that themselves by the power that you bring by listening. So... Those are the three biggest, I think those are the biggest ones I've seen so far. And I guess the last one would be foundational documents, making sure you have all your contracts and insurance and business license, have all your due diligence pieces in place before you start as well. So those are the four pieces that I find are the biggest roadblocks. I was a little bit longer than... Uh, <laughs> than no, I, not at all. I, I, I feel there could be a whole podcast episode just on on those roadblocks. Yeah. Um, so it's a very important message I wanted to share with your listeners about that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that's, that's been incredibly helpful. And, and, and if you'd like to find out more uh, about what Michael has just said, um, be be sure that that is exactly what Michael has done himself because his website is super clear. It says exactly what Michael does. It says what he offers. He's got a brilliant uh, set of, of PDF resources, free PDF resources that you can download today uh, to help you through those steps that Michael's just just explain then you know about your marketing about the messaging about the clarity of your website about um the style and uh, communication style that you that you can that are most that's most effective with with parents so uh those will be in the show notes below uh, as will the link to michael's website but uh as as a teaser for what you offer michael that was uh, absolutely spot on that was that was rocket powered um making sure that the parent feels uh very valued but not only that the parent feels valued but that they're they feel that their child is getting, uh, uh, you know, a high quality level of, of support is is incredibly important. You know, it's not many in industries where you're dealing with uh, the, you know, the, the the client, but that client is actually really on behalf of the person that you're working with. You know, you're not you're not really working with the parent, are you? You're working with the student, but it's the parent that you have to manage the relationship with. So this it's very complex. It can be very complex with a tutor, can't it? Absolutely. And it's just about that power of connection and, uh, and that 
will be the lifeblood of your business is if you have that strong power of connection, it'll, it'll expand, it'll spread out. And it, it, that, that is the power right there. That's the heart of your business is built is that power of clarity and connection with the people you're working with. And with, when you get to a team with your team, it really makes a difference. Which is the perfect segue, Michael, into uh, the uh, another part of, of the work that you do. Um, we've talked a lot uh, in, in the past 20 minutes or so about uh, independent tutors who, who make up a, a very large and very important part of, of the tutoring business. Um, but as we both know, as, as each and every one of you listening to us knows, uh, there also exists you know, many and very... Um, worthwhile uh, tutoring businesses who, who, who provide tutoring on a, on a larger scale. So, Michael, what I'd like to know from, from you is, is how do you help a tuition business with, with potentially multiple employees? So not just an independent tutor, but what do you do to aid tutoring companies? Sure thing. So for tutoring companies, um, right now, a lot of it is the hiring, training, um, and just helping to keep that personal touch for the tutoring company as they grow. Um, so that, that's been a concern is, oh, you know, we're, we're becoming more of a brand, but we don't want to lose that, that, that um, personal identity that, 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 that we give to families and to that special touch of how we interact with the families. So that's something we work on. And hiring and training of tutors, which is very, you know, that's a, a very important process because they, they are going to represent you and your company. And you want to make sure that you hire the best person, but at the same time, you do the best you can to train them so that they're ready to go out there, work with a student and, and provide the best possible service. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's potentially been hard for, for tutoring businesses, hasn't it, to, to retain or, or even to, to attract new tutors to work for them because hiring has been, has been very hard in the, in the past year. Um, but I, I, see, I imagine it's been very similar in Canada as it has, it has been in the UK where uh, a lot of uh, people have been kind of laid off jobs or have found that you know, they have more time to work a second job and, and that's, that's really benefited tutoring. Have you found that that's, that's been similar where, where you are? I have, I have. There's been definitely a boom in people doing tutoring and, um, and, that, and that demand for tutors has increased as well, which, you know, proportional to the increase in students looking for it as well, because, you know, just, you know, due to pandemic and all the things that go with it, there's been just an ebb and flow of people going into schools and out of schools and in schools and out of schools. So having that consistency of a tutor has been very beneficial for families. And so from there, people are hiring more tutors. Yeah. Thumbs up, thumbs up all round. If people are hiring more tutors, that that means a very, uh, very positive uh, and and kind of forward moving tutoring industry, which is, which is, um, which is why we're which is why we're here. Um, but similar to how we how we looked at uh, solutions to problems that the independent tutors have, when a tutoring business is beginning and and. and just as there's been a rise in the number of tutors who who've, who are looking for work, there's also been a rise in the number of tutoring businesses that have that have arisen in the pandemic. Um, you know, uh, teams of tutors forming uh, a partnership or a business together and and pooling their resources to to create you know a, a greater uh, reach and greater um, uh, spread for for you know their resources and for their skills. W- what are some of the biggest mistakes that that new tutoring companies make and and how can how can they avoid these mistakes it's a good question ludo it's it, there is a similarity to the private tutors uh the four points that i mentioned earlier but i i think as well if you're working working as a team it's very important that you have consistency and sometimes there can be you know everyone's on a different page and not sure what the other person's doing. So it's very important if you're going to develop a tutoring business and you're working together as a team that you have a consistent vision and mission and you have worked together collaboratively on goals and you know who's doing what, when you're doing it, and checking in with your team regularly to make sure that we're on the same page, we're moving toward this goal in our business so that you're not, it's not a scattershot and you're not just hoping for the best. So that, that's a very important element for tutor for teams that are working together as a team of tutors is making sure that you're on the same page and you're working towards one general large goal and you have a plan, a roadmap in place, how you're going to get to that goal with your business and consistency. Yeah, so, so that means 
uh, making sure that every tutor who works for for that company is aware of that company's kind of unique values and 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 ways of working and styles of tutoring is that that's kind of yeah. what you're getting at that's exactly it just making sure that they know where things are going and and how this company is unique from others as well so that you can share that when you're working with a student you can you know use those values when you're working with a family yeah and that's really important for for uh, tutoring business owners is that you know there are a lot of tutoring uh, companies out there especially tutoring agencies um, and we know that many tutors work or can work for a couple of different agencies because that's just the nature of tutoring work is that you're not always guaranteed consistent daily work with with one agency so if you're a tutoring business owner it's very important to think about a what separates you from other agencies and b how you can communicate that to your own tutors and in other words how you can convince your tutors to work with just you because you know you provide the best resources or the most comprehensive training or the best environment um, and I think as well, in addition to that, I think there's just treating your, your mentor tutors. I mean, it's a very simple you know, statement, but treating them how you'd want to be treated, treat them with respect. And they're not just somebody who works for you. You want to go that little extra mile for them to make sure that they feel welcome and they, and they, and they believe in the process and they feel heard. And that's important, especially right now, this is a very, you know, pandemic this is unprecedented time. You want, times you want to make sure that when you're working with people, that they feel good about what's going on and they feel comfortable and they feel at ease because if, you know, if you're not having that communication with your tutors and they're just another tutor in your company, then it's not going to last. Yeah. It's not going to last and then they'll move on or they'll set up kind of their own, their own, uh, their own uh, tutoring business. Um, so that's a really, really good look at, at uh, kind of a, the, the two strands, the two main strands of, of tutoring businesses are the, the independent tutor who has to deal with their own documents and their own website and their own marketing. And then, you know, tutoring businesses and how uh, they need to think about their tutors, not just as people who work for them, but as part of their own team. Um, and, you know, that comes from the years of experience you have in the tutoring industry, Um you know, you're saying that you've been a tutor since 2006 and obviously I Am Success has, has existed since 2011 and then you've been doing the coaching for a year and a half now. You know, there's, there's loads and loads in there. So I hope uh, you listeners have have taken uh, a number of things from, from this podcast. I, I certainly have. Um, and just as I was saying now, you know, I think there could be a whole different podcast just about, you know, any of the, the topics that we've discussed here. So we'd love to have you back on again, Michael, uh, in the coming months to talk about you know how we found the move into the summer then you, know, you obviously um, you have a great experience in knowing how to make use of those leaner months so perhaps another podcast during the summer months to keep up to date with, with how tutors are, are doing would be would be really beneficial but thank you very very much Michael. Well thank you it'll be my pleasure to uh, come back and thank you for having me here today and uh, thank you to your listeners for uh, participating. Yeah and as I said um don't forget to visit, to visit coachfortutors.com. Uh, um, there's plenty of uh, amazing uh, free PDF uh, content there, um, as well as a more of an exploration into, into Michael's services. Now, Michael, was there, there were three specific PDFs that you wanted to, to draw our attention to today. Was that right? Uh, yes. So, yeah, the first one is, is already on your, it's already going to be on your website, but the 2021 is a client growth checklist, which gives an outline of of things you would like in place to have your client growth occur. Uh, second one is your launch success. For these are for newer companies and newer private tutors, the launch success checklist. And it has a check guide by step-by-step -step on what you need to launch your company. And the last one is your, is your networking joint ventures ch checklist, which helps with expanding your network, partnering up with other companies in order to expand your, to your uh, base of clients. Wonderful. Uh, three of the most important resources and, and for a wide range of people in the tutoring industry. So uh, thank you very much for providing those. There's many, many more. Uh, and you can find also uh, Michael's Tutoring Business Success Support Group, uh, which is a Facebook group um, on, on his website. Wonderful. OK, well, thank you again, Michael. Uh, and have a, have, a, have a great day. Thanks, Neil. You too. OK, bye. Bye. bye.